Welcome to this edition of Canola TV, featuring the latest information on producing and marketing winter canola in the Southern Plains. Canola TV, a service of PCOM, Producers Cooperative Oil Mill. Thinking about, you know, the guys here that's got canola this year, you know, how am I going to harvest this crop? I get questions all the time. Well, you, you talk me into planting it, now how, how, how are you going to, how am I supposed to harvest this? And basically I tell guys that it all depends on how it best fits into your operation. There's not one farmer here that does everything exactly the same. And everybody does everything a little bit different. And there's nothing wrong with that. But basically with canola, you have three harvesting options. You can direct cut it, you can swath it and pick it up, pick it up, or you can push it and straight harvest it as well. Uh, there is also the applying a desiccant, as Brad talked about, uh, and we'll go a little bit in, into that. When we first got started harvesting and working with this crop, Brad, in 2005, we were going to straight harvest it all. But what we, what I couldn't do was to get a wheat farmer to pull out of a wheat field to go harvest his canola. Now, granted, times have changed. We got a canola price that's exceptionally well right now. Uh, when we compare it to the wheat price, this crop is worth more than the wheat is. I'm going to put most of all my priority towards getting it out uh, in a timely fashion and be as successful as I can and do the best I can with what I have. That being said, over the years we thought we were going to direct harvest it. Uh, we had a lot of farmers start swathing. And when they started swathing, what we started noticing was that they were able to control that harvest. They were just in a little bit more control of when they, when they swathed it and when they picked it up. And for guys that wanted to get in and swath that crop and pick it up right before wheat harvest, it worked really well. Now they were, they were still strapped on time for sure, but generally when they swathed the crop, that was the first thing that that combine was gonna be in the field with picking up. And a lot of guys like that method. Personally, it is probably the most consistent because you're able to get in there and even up your field uh, and place it in a windrow. And uh, you know, guys really like that. They like to be able to get out there, swath it, and know within five to seven days they're going to be picking it up and getting it in the bin and getting it to the elevator, getting it where it's safe. Uh, we're going to try to, you know, Josh passed around uh, the winter canola harvesting options fact sheet and there's also a uh, canola swathing guide that, that I passed around with it and uh, you know if you're looking to swath your canola we try to look for that 50 to 60 percent color change and this basically demonstrates what to look for in that plant. Chad I'm gonna rob some of your yield here. So when I'm looking at the plant and trying to determine when to swath it at the appropriate time at that 50 to 60 percent color change I've got to take the main stem of the stalk so we pull this off and we get down to the to the nitty-gritty here and get to our main stem you divide this up into thirds so you have a bottom third a middle third and a top third this top third is still actually filling out and eventually these pods down here will, will be the same size up here. If the bottom of this is turned brown, black seed, and the middle is starting to speckle just to start to turn, and if you can take a top pod off up here and open up the seed, and that seed's going to be firm and green, and you can roll it around in your, in, with your fingers and apply a little bit of pressure, it's generally ready to swap. It's more of an art, not a science. And when you factor in weather conditions, you have to be checking it every day. Seed color change happens very fast. And if you're not on top of it, it will change, it, it'll, it'll catch you off guard. So seed color change is very important when determining when to swath canola. It changes just as much at night as it does during the day uh, when this crop is maturing down. So if you think you've got a couple of days, you might as well cut it in half. You've probably got a one day. So just a 
you've got to be checking it because it will definitely change on you. When we swap it, I think swathing this year is going to be interesting because we've got an excellent crop uh, with excellent yield potential out there. Uh, if we've got 30 and 35 foot draper swathers, we're going to have a tremendous windrow out there with all this material to go through it. I think the thing is to take your time, go slow, make sure you've got that packer on there and that packer's pressing that windrow down in those stalks. You know, you want to try to cut below those, that seed pod, but also you want to be able to make sure that you're getting the, the pods underneath it and it's, it's flowing good through the machine. Uh, those stalks act as your anchor to anchor that windrow down. As that crop, as you place it on, on top of the windrow or inside that windrow and press it down a little bit, it dries, that, the, the crop, the windrow dries, and as it dries, it gets fluffier. And so it gets to moving on you more. So you want to make sure not to smash it down as tight as you can get it in there because you want some air to go underneath that crop to dry it out. You just want to basically tuck the ends and tuck it in so that it, that it will withstand a, a pretty good wind. As far as picking it up, we we'll try to get that moisture be below 10%. And generally, a good five to seven days after you swath it, you're in there picking it up. And of course, that's gonna depend on the weather. If it's like it's been the last two days for a week after you swath it, it, it may not be ready may have to give it a little more time but as we get warmer and things start drying out faster it's going to speed up the drying of that crop a lot more I've seen guys go in and swath it and within three days they were picking it up so it depends on how thick the windrow how big the crop is and how much drying time it has it really doesn't hurt for it to dry slowly because the slower it dries the better it changes the seed color in that crop in that windrow. I get a lot of questions about, well, if I get a rain on it, is it going to be ruined? No. It will withstand rain. Uh, and, and actually, it helps change that seed color better in that windrow. Canola TV, a service of PCOM and produced by OklahomaFarmReport.com.